Now that I have over 250 hours in Helldivers 2, I have a very solid handle on which stratagems I really like and which ones I don't like. After doing an individual tier list for each category and the devs patching certain items several times, let's create a final tier list for every stratagem in Helldivers 2. The machine gun is an easy D tier item. This weapon has armor pen making it better for bots at times and good for medium sized bugs. The ammo economy on this gun however is utter garbage and makes it never worth using. You just don't get hardly anything to shoot with and every reload forces you to sit in place for an extended period of time. Actually decent damage overall but the usability is incredibly low. The anti-material rifle is also a D-tier support weapon. This has the ability to two-shot hulks, and while terrible against bugs, it can hold its own against the automatons. My main issue with this item is that it has really tough recoil, even when you're fully prone, and its ammo economy is down in the dirt. An easy fix to move it up the list is make it fully resupply from one crate. Right now, you just don't get enough shots back, and even with the supply pack, it's outclassed by many other support weapons. Also, some more damage would be nice, since snipers are really strong, but this just feels good kind of good in that department. The Stalwart is a very good C tier weapon. They gave this thing way more ammo than any other gun in the game, being able to shoot forever which makes it amazing for hordes of bugs. Only issue is that it can feel like a primary at times in terms of damage and is outclassed in bug clears by the arc thrower. Great to run alongside an eats and one of the more fun weapons to use though. The expendable anti-tank is the most S tier item in the game at the moment. You can one shot chargers with these and since it drops two at a time with a one minute cooldown they're always ready. Four people running them means eight rockets littering the map over and over. Incredible item that lets you run whatever support weapon you want as well since you can drop and pick it up at any time. Really easy to throw in any loadout and while not as good against bots it still puts in work for big targets. The recoilless rifle lands in a solid A tier spot. This is the expendable if it came with 7 rockets and a backpack. Just as effective at taking out larger enemies and always nice if you get a friend to quick load it for you. The EAT is way more fluid usually as this item needs you to sit for a long reload and it doesn't get much ammo back on resupply. Also taking up a backpack slot when there are really powerful options that can make you think twice before taking this. The flamethrower upon release was an easy F tier weapon and has moved all the way up to a C tier. They gave it a massive damage boost that lets you very quickly take down bugs. Chargers in fact become trivial with this item and anything that isn't a hunter takes no effort to clear. Not a bot weapon as it doesn't have any range and well that's the problem. Great damage but when bile spewers start swarming you it does nothing to them and the burn potential for you and your team is high no matter how much people pretend it isn't. Bonus on the flamethrower for being really darn fun though. The autocannon has gone from a C on launch all the way up to being S, one of the best stratagems in the game. Before the railgun was nerfed, there was no major incentive to run this. Well, now it's the only item I run against bots, and usually a top pick of mine for bugs as well. Closes up factories and bug holes, takes out chargers and hulks, uses a backpack and support weapon slot in one, leaving you open for another attack stratagem. This item's a must for automatons now, and while not amazing for bile titans, it wipes everything else in bugs. Just be sure to not fold empty it so your reload's much faster and you are golden. The railgun went from being an easy S tier to now an A tier. They made this a lot tougher to use as you must fully charge it to make the shots effective against the big stuff. This was nerfed just enough in some ways but also probably too much now since they gave the expendable a major buff. Either way, it's a very nice option for bots still and if correctly used has insane power. Being able to assist in headshotting bile titans is too good, although their usefulness against chargers has been reduced a lot. Great item, just not as quote unquote OP as it was. The spear is a D tier item that's lucky it's not in F. The more I play with this, the more inconsistent the lock on is. Almost never working when I need it to, it only gets 4 shots and takes up a backpack slot. Yes, it's highly effective when it works, but it never works. They need to fix this lock on as it is very noticeably jacked up. You can be in perfect distance of an enemy and have it never lock on for literally no reason. I had it in A tier before because the range on it's very nice, but consistency is everything and the spear has none. The Orbital Gatling Barrage is a D tier item. Cleans up fodder well with a great cooldown and longer duration. Nothing really bad about it other than we have better options. If I want horde clears, I go with the Cluster Bomb or the Arc Thrower. Also, sometimes enemies seem to walk through this taking no damage, which is obviously not ideal. 
The orbital airburst strike sits in B tier. Covering a large area and hitting hard, this decimates a breach. Sending out three spurts of raining shrapnel, it never fails to get a ton of kills and thin out whatever is chasing you. I only wish it wasn't so easy to team kill with this, but one of the more satisfying stratagems to use. The Orbital 120 Barrage goes in C tier for me. Throw this into a bot base to get rid of everything there, but really has no other use. Another item that can be unpredictable and team kill more than you like. Very long duration though, and usually targets that specific area you hit pretty well. The Orbital 380 is also a C tier item. Being just a more powerful version of the 120, it puts in way more work. Anything you throw this at is eventually going to get cleaned out with a massive duration. Only for the automatons, but highly effective there. Orbital Walking Barrage gets a B tier as it hits with the massive explosions of the other two barrages but is more consistent. Basically anything in front of you gets blown up. Great for moving towards a heavily fortified area or taking out the larger bot bases at range. More often than not it can hit tanks or towers which makes it not amazing but really really good. The Orbital Laser is an S tier item. Yes, it only has three charges that each get a cooldown in between, but go play with it for three seconds and you know how effective it can be. On bugs, it can demolish tons of enemies quickly as you escape and move in. And for bots, it will defeat an entire bot base by itself. Yes, at times it gets team kills because enemies are close to you, but over half the items in the game get team kills. That's just something you gotta work with. I don't often take this unless it's a kill mission, but the power behind it is amazing. Immense. The Orbital Rail Cannon Strike always will be an S tier item. This has the potential to one shot Bile Titans, will one shot Hulks and Towers, and cuts down Chargers in a single shot. It is highly reliable, although sometimes less accurate than you want it. This is by far my most used item in the game. For bugs, it is always with me because you get so much damage so often. And for bots, it's always there to drop an entire tank from a distance or get that flamethrower Hulk off of your back. No timer either, so as soon as you throw it, the rail cannon smacks whatever it is really, really hard. The Eagle Strafing Run moves down from C tier to D tier for me. You get multiple uses of this and it can clear out a horde, but no one ever uses it. With the Cluster Bomb available, this is just not worth taking as the AoE is far smaller and just a bit more awkward. This having one less charge than the Cluster Bomb alone makes it nearly worthless unless you just don't have anything else available. Not bad on its own for group clear, but overall kinda garbage. The Eagle Airstrike gets an S tier, 3 uses and sends down loads of missiles that explode in a wide area. This is required on bot missions almost for its effectiveness against enemies and their bases. And against bugs, you can angle it correctly to destroy bug nests and chargers. Never seems to work much against Bile Titans, but it has low team kill potential compared to the Cluster Bomb and puts in more work. Honestly, one of the best items in the game that you never hate to see in anyone's loadout. And the Eagle Cluster Bomb is an A tier item. This is the best horde clear in the game. Covers more area than anything and usually gives you upwards of 20 kill streaks every single time. Not my go to on bots because you want more tank kill potential, but for bugs, it's always going to get rid of bug breaches and save your butt constantly. The heavy amount of team kill potential places it a bit lower, but man, one of these on the team at least is a game changer. Angle it just right, and the scary amount of stuff behind you simply disappears. The Eagle Napalm is probably a B tier item. I've only ever used this just to test because in serious missions, the regular airstrike is better every time. You do get fire damage on the ground with this, but DOT damage is super weak in this game and it's just an okay benefit. Solid item that just gets beat by the regular version. Maybe take both for some fun and it could be much more effective, but yeah, only for bugs. The Jump Pack gets a solid B tier for me. This grants you a backpack that thrusts you up into the air, enough to clear fences, chargers, and get into some more fun spots on the map. Use this more and it gets better and better, allowing for much better maneuverability. Only reason I rank it a bit lower is again you gotta consider the other options you have when selecting equipment. Both the Shield Generator and Supply Pack greatly boost your combat prowess while this item is just pretty good. Very fun and a nice choice, but hard to run over some of the really strong packs that we have. The Eagle Smoke Strike moves from a D tier down to an F tier. I don't care how many times people tell me this makes bots lose you, the smoke is not only highly ineffective but makes your already low vision missions even harder to maneuver inside. Also, do you really want to waste a valuable stratagem slot with this item that doesn't do anything? Smoke is just garbage in this game and doesn't work like it should to lower enemy vision. 
The Eagle 110 Rocket Pods are an easy C tier item. These pack a lot of power with three uses and can be great for tanks, towers, and bio titans. Problem is, they're so inconsistent. Half the time, they just miss, and that's really all there is to it. The targeting on these needs a massive improvement, and the AoE makes them only good against a single target. They never get larger groups, even when coming out of a breach. The Eagle 500 KG Bomb is an S tier stratagem. Blowing up in a nuke sized fashion, you get two of these that cool down quick. Really nice for large targets and a staple for bug missions. Not near as good on bots with the airstrike being there, but hitting a Bile Titan under the belly with this is peak gameplay. Also, can clear out a bug breach, giving it multiple uses. Yes, the range on it's lower than it should be, but still puts in way more work than most options. The Orbital Precision Strike seems to be an A tier. It is so accurate that you can miss a lot of the times, but packing such massive power, it puts in work. Unfortunately, this is a stratagem that extra call in time almost ruins. It is almost the 500 kg if it had even less range. You just need to hit that enemy right on. If you do, it does insane damage and feels great for both bots and bugs. One of the more well-rounded stratagems, actually. For the orbital gas strike, I'm gonna go D tier. This lets out gas once it hits, and man, it's so underpowered. Whatever gets hit usually dies by the gas in a couple seconds, but it doesn't last near long enough, and man, the damage is just so poor. It just feels like the devs are terrified to make damage over time too good, and this one right here just feels weak enough to not be worth taking. Gas especially should last way longer and just do more damage. Orbital EMS Strike goes into the A tier. This has a quick cooldown and allows you to completely freeze an army in an instant. It can be tough to hit at the right time and the EMS Mortar is usually better, but having this can save not only you, but your teammates as well. Place it on a bug breach and you couldn't be happier. Orbital Smoke is going to move from the D tier down to the F tier, the worst of the smokes by far and these items are just not worth it over any other stratagem in the game. This needs a much lower cooldown to be ever considered usable. The HMG is a C tier item. This is really fun to use as it sounds great and shoots out so many bullets, even being effective for quite some time. Love it for extractions or holding down objectives. Main issue is the turn speed. It takes so long to turn that you get frustrated every time you try. Honestly, kind of wish it had its ammo refilled by the supply pack too, but maybe that's asking too much. The Shield Generator is an incredible S-tier stratagem. I've heard a lot of people complain that this doesn't survive long enough on level 6 difficulty in past, but that's just simply wrong. Me and my team use it on level 7s all the time and it constantly saves us, giving you just enough cover to move around, giving you a chance to thin the horde behind you, and being one of the best tools you can bring against the automatons. This one item can completely change how robots feel for you and make extracting with a whirlwind of bullets around you more possible. The Tesla Tower is a B tier. You will get team killed by this all the time in regular missions and chargers break it instantly. But for defense missions, you plop it down, have it clear out all the enemies. Just need an eat for when the chargers show up and seriously, this item melts. Especially since the bio spewers are way overtuned and don't die to anything. This item actually drops them fast, allowing you to deal with a different area altogether or just a different enemy. More tricky to use than most, but great once you kind of figure it out. The anti-personal mines are an F tier, not gonna argue about this or even say much. They place down mines that don't activate well enough and cover your own territory, with these explosives that make you die instantly. They're a massive waste. The supply pack is an S tier, definitely one of the best items in the game. This gives you a backpack with four extra resupply packs on it, meaning not just four more packs of ammo, but more grenades and stims as well. If you're using a primary weapon more often, this lets you go to town. If you've got a support weapon like the railgun or grenade launcher that eats through ammo, this grants you near infinite. Yeah, you can't go with a defensive backpack for less damage taken, but the supply pack is perfection. Having more ammo feels way better than most other perks, and the extra stims especially makes you nearly immortal. The grenade launcher is a solid A tier support weapon. It doesn't have a lot of ammo, but each shot clears an entire group of bugs or bots, effective at destroying bases and nests quickly, has very high range, and is the perfect pairing with the supply pack. Slightly less accurate than the auto cannon and doesn't deal with tanks all that well, regardless it has such high utility and is pretty accurate as far as a GL experience goes. Who knew lobbing grenades all over the place would be fun? 
The laser cannon went from being an easy F tier item to now a solid B tier. You could not defeat anything in a timely manner before, but now it comes with armor piercing and is good against most targets. All the robots feel easy to defeat with this and bugs are a joke. You mow down swarms in seconds. The main issue is that it has heat generation, so on hot planets this is unusable, and even on normal ones it's a little bit harder. Cold planets is where it shines like no other, but yeah this is really really solid now. Not perfect and in no way the best tank killer, but feels way better and makes a full laser loadout more than viable. The incendiary mines are also a major F tier. Being worse than the other mines, they do nothing and are never worth it over literally any other stratagem. The Guard Dog Rover is an A tier backpack. This has a laser rover fly around you and laser down anything that moves. It's really nice at keeping bugs away from you and can stop the more annoying bots from getting on top of you as well. It definitely friendly fires more than I would like, but usually the teammate with this gets more kills at the end, as those annoying hunters become way less of a problem. Also, this backpack never really seems to even overheat. You always get a laser friend for the entire mission, even though you would think it wouldn't last that long. The Ballistic Shield's a major F tier. This has a shield that you're going to hold in one hand or keep on your back. It only protects against basic fire and sometimes not even that. Any stray rocket deals all of your health through it and will knock the thing out of your hand. It can even break sometimes and just does not work well as a shield. There's a theory that if you crouch it works better and that's completely made up. No benefit to crouching or not crouching. Just don't use this piece of garbage. The shield generator is better in every single way. And the Arc Thrower went from a C tier on my list to now being an S tier. This item takes some time to get used to, but is a monster. Infinite ammo, can hit at ridiculous range, trashes multiple enemies at a single time, and damages both small and tanks. You melt robots easily with this, and bugs don't stand a chance. Learn to fire it more quickly, and yeah, no better option for Horde Clear. The only downside is massive team kill potential. However, we do have armor to help negate that now, and honestly, someone who's used this enough is never gonna team kill. It's all about knowing when to fire and when not to. Lightning that hits all targets in the game and is always effective is just absurdly powerful. The shield generator pack is an easy S tier. You get a backpack that protects you from damage using an energy shield. This regens quickly and can take several hits that might usually result in death. The item completely nullifies the ballistic shield in every single way, no matter what people say. It is much more reliable and protects from any direction. You can never go wrong with this item for both bots and bugs. The machine gun sentry is a D tier item. Not bad at all, just worse than the Gatlin version. Supposedly it wastes less ammo and has armor pen, but the other one always kills faster, which is what you need this for. The Gatlin Sentry is an A tier item. It isn't a perfect item all the time, but when you really need him, you've got thousands of bullets flying into your enemies. This plops down a turret that goes brrrr. Really, really nice for running away from large groups or just getting rid of the annoying hunters as you deal with chargers. The Mortar Sentry goes in B tier. This lobs really strong explosives very far into the enemy. It does an insane amount of damage in from further than almost any other item in the game. Amazing for decimating bot bases as you're about to go in, but make sure to destroy it as soon as you move out. Any single target getting near you means your mortar instantly shoots at it and kills you as well, making it much less useful on bug missions but always amazing on kill missions regardless. The Guard Dog is a D tier. I used to consider it C, but there's really no reason to run it. The Rover version has near unlimited ammo and works better. This guy runs out of ammo and lands on your back so much you're hardly ever going to see the screen. Yes, it can do good damage overall, but when you have the laser version as an alternative, this becomes useless. The Auto Cannon is an easy A tier. Not always perfect as it can get destroyed quick, but man does it put in work. Throw it on a good location and it's going to clear out all the big targets for you. Slow to fire, but chunks away Charger and Bile Titan health. Probably one of the best defensive stratagems in the game for bugs as its raw power is unmatched. The Rocket Sentry is weirdly D tier. It should be very strong, but simply target stuff it isn't good at killing. You need more than 8 shots to take off Charger armor, and the Auto Cannon does that in half. You're gonna need 4 Rocket Sentries, all shooting a Bile Titan just to kill one, if you even can. And those are the two targets that it shoots at. Very nice for medium sized enemies, but less effective than the Auto Cannon overall. 
The EMS mortar is crazy S tier. Place this down and it lobs EMS fields all over the map, slowing hordes over and over. This gives you time to move in and take the buggers out or run away and extract. It can really suck if you place it down incorrectly and the charger breaks it in an instant, but get it back far enough and you have the free win button. Way, way good against bugs and definitely a nice option against bots as well. And here we have the Patriot Exosuit, which I would say is an A tier. This drops down a mech that has a lot of machine gun ammo and a good set of rockets. One arm trashes tanks while the other mows the lawn. These are not made for bots as they're just going to get blown up too fast, but for bugs you have an excellent option. Very strong for evacuations as it trivializes those and nice for some of the larger base objectives as well. These are good at what their purpose is, destroying enemies fast and letting your team do objectives behind you. People think these are bad in higher difficulties because they aren't using them correctly. Use one rocket per charger leg, chew biles when they show up, and keep all the smaller stuff off your team. Then when it runs out of ammo, hop out and go on foot again. This is not a tank, it's a damage dealing mech. Big difference and it's very effective at its job. And there you have every single stratagem ranked in Helldivers 2. After 250 plus hours, this is how I feel about all of them. The patch did change support weapons quite a bit and shift their rankings. As for everything else, they seem pretty self-explanatory. Items that don't bring enough to the table like smoke and mines, I never use. And items I always use like the airstrike, rail cannon, and supply pack are at the top. Hopefully, this gives you some idea of what the more useful and fun stratagems are in the game. Other than that, Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.